This is the first video in the video discussion for the integral going from 0 to infinity of sine of 1 over x squared. I'm going to solve this one for you guys in the next video because in this video, I would like to talk about these five. And you will see that this one is really special. Have a look at the first one. If we just have cosine x, of course, we could just integrate it and then plug in infinity, plug in 0. Technically, it's take the limit. But a better way to solve this is to look at the picture for cosine x. So let me put this down right here for you guys. Cosine starts at 1 and looks like this. Now, this and this, they have the same area, but the integral value here, this would be positive, that would be negative. In fact, I will tell you, if you integrate from 0 to pi over 2, you get 1. But once you go down here, the value for the integral will be negative 1. Now, when we integrate from 0 to infinity, we just have to keep track of these values. So, have a look. We started at here, and then once we get to here, it's 1. Once we get to here, it's negative 1, but altogether it's 0. And then from here to here is another negative 1. So, from here to here, the whole thing total is negative 1. But if you go here, it becomes 0 again, and so on, so on, so on. As you can see, this right here, it's just the repeat of before, right? So there is no value that the result is approaching. So in fact, this thing right here diverges. It's not diverges to passing infinity or whatnot. It diverges because there's no value that this thing is approaching to. Similarly, for sine x, sine starts at 0, 0, and goes out like this. This area and that area are equal. I will tell you, if you integrate from 0 to pi, you will end up with 2. But once you go down below here, this is going to be negative 2. So now let's keep track. From here to here is 2, from here to here is negative 2, but all the way will be 0. And then from here to here is 2, and then 0, and so on, so on, so on. Right, 2, 0, 2, 0. No, it's not going to converge. There's no value that this is approaching to. Again, this right here, diverge. Now, it gets interesting when we have x squared inside of the cosine, because the picture looks like this. We still start at cosine 0, which is 1. And I'll tell you, it actually goes down and then come back up. But here, though, the period, there's no period for this. Okay, Earlier, the period is just 2 pi. So it's just a duplication than the before, right? But when you have x squared, there's no period for that. What's going to happen is that you will see once x gets big and big, the inside is going to get bigger much faster. So it's going to be something like this. Yes, I'm not kidding. Take a look at the picture. See? And now, here we have area. This area is a little bit smaller, and then area, area, area. But the interesting part is this. Now, if you go up, the moment you go up and then come back down almost right away, this part is very small. And it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Likewise, the top and bottom, same thing. So this part, as x goes to infinity, they are not really going to contribute much. So there is a value that when we add up all the regions, right, when you integrate them, we get a finite result. And the finite result is equal to, the famous one is when you go from negative infinity to infinity, and you get pi over 2. But this right here is just 0 to infinity, so you just have half of it. All right? And in fact, this is the famous Fresnel integral. Right here, when we have sine of x squared, same thing. In fact, they have the same value. So I think this is really cool. Half, because it's going from 0 to infinity, and we have square root of pi over 2. For this, though, I will give you a picture real quick as well. Starting at 0, 0. And in fact, here, we get something like this. Go up, and then, ready? 
yeah, something like that. Now, what do you think about this and that? Are they going to have the same answer though? Just like this. Well, no. If you look at the picture of this, then you'll see that, aha, this right here, actually, you know the answer right away too. This time, when we have zero, we will have trouble because we get one over zero. So technically, we should take the limit as x approaching zero. So as x gets smaller and smaller, one over x squared is getting bigger and bigger. So it's going to be like this part because it's inside of the cosine function. So what's going to happen is like this. It's not starting at zero, one. X cannot be zero. It's, it's just going to be like this. Now you cannot even tell what it is, just like that part, okay? And then it's going to jump back up like this. Then as x gain to infinity, one over infinity squared is going to be zero. Cosine zero is one. So we will have a horizontal asymptote like that. Now, guess what? I really don't know what's happening right here, but this right here, it's pretty small region. But if you go from this point and on, you can see that this right here, it's going to be bigger and bigger. You will have infinite area. And I'm pretty sure this is much bigger than this and all these things together. So in fact, this thing actually diverges and we can say it diverges to infinity, all right? Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to put it down as diverges. Now, does this also diverge? Of course not, because otherwise, how can I make the next video, right? This thing actually converges very nicely. But now let's have a look. Why does it have a chance to converge? Again, if x is approaching zero, we will get infinity inside, and you will just get something like that. So it's going to be like this. Yeah? And then what's going to happen is it's going to jump up, but guess what? As x going to infinity, one over infinity squared is zero, sine of zero, zero. So this thing will come back down. It's going to approach the x-axis. So as you can see, I really don't know what's happened here. This right here is just one small part, okay? This part, it looks pretty okay. Now, from this point and forward, you can see the curve is getting really, really close to the x-axis. So you don't have much area contribution to the whole thing. So that's why we have a chance to get finite value for this thing. And of course, you have to watch my next video in order to find out how big this thing is and how to compute it. Or at the moment, you can also give it a try, right? See you in the next video. That's it.